So now that we know how it's been managed, it is difficult for us to properly manage, especially this approach, without being able to predict the future action rate. So you are expected to know how to predict. And this is actually good for you because beyond passing exams, it's also going to help your financial planning personally. So you need to learn how to predict foreign exchange rate. And there are three methods we'll be looking at. We'll look at what we call the purchasing power parity theory. We'll call this one purchasing power parity theory. Yeah, PPPT. Then we have the interest rates. Parity theory. Interest rate parity theory. Call that that one. And the third one is the international. If heard of this guy before when we did investment appraisal. I'm writing too fast. <laughs> international Fisher. International Fisher effect. Yeah. So we we'll look at these three because these are the three ways you can predict FX rates. And there are three different theories. The first one we we'll look at is the purchasing power theory. And what is this guy saying? Just simple. This guy is saying that the price, I'm going to break it down for you because I know some students get so confused with all of this. What he's just saying is that the purchasing power of currency should be similar. And if it is similar, then the price of good in one country should be the same in another country. The only reason why it will not be different is exchange rate. And I'm going to repeat again. This is saying that the price of good, say in the UK, should be the same as price in US. Yeah? Except for action units. That is the example of the expression I'm giving on purchasing power parity. He's saying that because it's the same good. Yeah, but if I'm going to buy a pen in the UK, whether I'm buying it in the UK or in the US, it's the same pen. So why is price going to be different? The only reason why it should be different is the exchange rate. So which means that if exchange rate in the UK, if our exchange rate is $1.2 for one pound, and a pen is costing 100 pounds in the UK, right? Then in the US, it should be costing how much? It should be costing $120 and no more. Because the only difference should just be exchange rate. There shouldn't be any other thing because the purchasing power of the currency should be similar. The only difference is just the exchange rate. Because we are talking of the same product. And the reason why I'm saying it is that if that is not the case, yeah, if that is not the case, then there's inflation involved. Take for instance, if instead of 120, it is now costing $150 in US, then something else is involved. It's not only actually that is involved. And what is involved is what purchasing power part is called inflation that means inflation is involved and when inflation is involved what is going to happen is that 
there will be arbitrage. And what is arbitrage? Let me explain to you. Arbitrage is a way of making money by buying from one place and selling in another place without even in, no investment. You are just buying from one person, you are just taking advantage of prices in different locations. So what is going to happen is someone in the U.S., yeah? So someone in U.S., we just because exchange rate is one point two, so we use one twenty dollars to exchange to one hundred pounds, yeah, and what does it do? Buys a pen in UK. Then what does it do? Brings it back to US and do what sells at one fifty dollars. So the guy has only used one twenty to make one fifty dollars, and what has he made profit of thirty dollars? This is called arbitrage. And there are a lot of people that make money like that. You hear the word arbitrage, arbitrage, arbitrage. And that way you hear of arbitrage is people that do Airbnb. They rent an apartment at $2,000 per month. They rent it out on Airbnb, making more money. It's called rent arbitrage. So arbitraging is about taking good from one person in a price and selling another price across locations in FM management that is what we are looking at as arbitrage so what this theory is saying is that when these people are doing this arbitraging it will get to a point whereby everything will normalize and what will normalize there will be force of demand and supply will play on currency and what will it cost because you can see what's going on here. With what you can see here, you see that but the US guys, what they are trying what is going on is they are buying which currency? Pounds. They keep buying pounds because they are selling their own every time they're selling one twenty one twenty dollars to buy one hundred pounds. Buying one hundred pounds. It keeps buying one hundred pounds. And once they are buying what they are making pounds to do is stronger. And it start getting stronger and it will change. It will stop being 1.2. And it can turn to, it's so strong, it turns to 1.5. And when it becomes 1.5, then arbitrage becomes zero. No more arbitrage. Because it's not going to cost you $150 to get 100 pounds and it doesn't make any sense again to arbitrage and that is what purchasing power party is talking about even if you find a situation whereby the action rate is not the only difference between two prices it will normalize over time to make it the same such that purchasing power of currency across countries is the same the only difference will always be the exchange rate and that is why this law this theory is also called law of one price because it's saying that the price of a good must be the same in different countries that is why it's called law of one price I hope this is clear. Yeah. So, it is as simple as that. The only reason why prices should be different across countries is exchange rate. And if it is not the same because of exchange rate alone, then inflation is involved. And when inflation is involved, it will normalize after a time by 
affecting the exchange rate so that eventually it will become equal price and it's called law of one price but this is a very good predictor please take note it's the best very good predictor of exchange rate out of all the three we are looking at this is the best of future exchange rate this is the best right but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have limitations so it still have limitations so there are weaknesses and what are those weaknesses imagine i was just telling you that because if it's 150 you can do arbitraging but guess what what about the shipping cost logistic cost so the problem is that this theory does not consider all these things transport cost because even if i want to be shipping all the way from uk to us to arbitrage i will go i will spend money on shipping but this lot did not tell us anything about that likewise transaction cost there might be commission in the uk that's not in the us so all those things it didn't, it didn't talk about that likewise didn't talk about the taxation effect yeah so these are the weaknesses please take notes of purchasing power parity these are the weaknesses i need to know them and how do we use it to predict the future exchange rate he has a formula which i will give you and it says that today's rate today's rate is always called the spot rate yeah today fx rate multiply by one plus inflation rates in the first currency divided by one plus inflation rate in the second currency is equals to the future exchange rate that we're talking about that we're looking for so that is the way we're going to predict future exchange rate by using this formula and let me quickly tell you don't get confused about what is first or second in this paper it is very easy first is always the currency they are writing first and the second is the second currency so in this quote that i'm giving you now 1.5 dollar slash pounds the first currency is dollar and the second currency is pounds the one at the back is the second and the one they write first is the first so there's no need to get confused about that let's quickly look at the question and see how we can predict future exchange rate yes we can do that let's let's try and predict future exchange rate guys we can do that yeah look at this question a pen is sold in uk for two thousand pounds and in the us for four thousand dollars the exchange rate is two dollar for one pound currently so which means this is spot so this is our spot rate because it's currently remember spot is the rate today now what will be the exchange rate in one year if the inflation rates are four percent and seven percent in the uk and us respectively so remember the formula the formula that we're going to use is the one we have on top here yeah this formula here what is our spot rate is two dollar we already know that so multiply by one plus inflation rate for the first currency first currency is dollar because that's one we wrote first so which means inflation rate in dollars what is that that is seven percent and four percent is for uk so one plus four percent remember second currency is pound because they wrote it second right so that's two multiplied by 1.07 1.07 by 1.04 let's see what does that give us quickly 1.07 divided by 1.04 times 2 that gives us 2.0577 2.0577 dollars slash pounds 
And let me sign this note of warning quickly. Please note and note very well that anytime you are doing foreign currency question, you are expected to give your answer, your exchange rate in four decimal places. It is the only exception in this paper. Please take note. You are expected to give it in four decimal places. Usually when you do all of this calculation, you usually do in whether it's FM or any paper, two decimal places. But please note that in risk management, you are not expected to do two decimal places, but four decimal places. Please take notes and I need you to get used to that. Yeah. So that is the answer and that will be the exchange rate in the next one year. And you can, let's make sense out of it. Theoretically, look at this rate. What has happened to pounds? What has happened is that pound is stronger over one year. Because now you need more dollar to get one pound. A year ago, you only needed two dollar. But after one year, you need 2.0577, which is more. So pound is stronger. Why is pound stronger? Pound is stronger because pound has a lower inflation rate. So what purchasing power parity is saying is that inflation is bad for your exchange rate. Inflation is bad for exchange rate. It would be similar to what I was explaining here. Because when inflation makes, what is inflation? It's rising price. So if inflation makes the price to be 150 in the US, the next thing is, purchase power parity is saying that exchange rate will weaken because people will be buying pounds to do arbitrage and they will make pounds to be strong. And that's why pounds will rise as high as 1.5 in order to correct that arbitrage situation. And it's inflation that is causing it. Yeah, and every time there's inflation, that correction will keep taking place until the currency rate becomes useless. Yeah. You see? And you can see 4%, 7%. 4% is lower, which means better. And 7% in the US is worse. And that is why you see that pounds get much stronger. 